going on everybody it is your boy nothing but skills and today i'm going to be showing you guys how to clear pier 93 solo farming it's the easiest way to get classified gear the chances of you getting a really good classified piece is really high now you have a chance of opening up the reward resistant caches three times and then not only that once you clear wave five the first boss round you'll get a resistant one cache and once you clear wave 10 the next boss round you get a resistant two cache now resistant two caches have a chance of dropping exotic and classified items the resistant one caches don't usually drop too much but you still have a really good chance of getting those three classified items from the reward box and you can open it up three times by the time you complete round 10 so if you just want to follow along and watch this video I'm gonna show you some tips some tricks to maximize the amount of shade tech that you can get now this build that I'm currently using is a nomad build that I will be releasing later on this week I wanted to show you the solo farm first so that way you guys would be excited about seeing this nomad build I've been working on it for a while I was missing a couple pieces for PvE but in the last global event I was able to get those pieces so I'm able to bring you one of my favorite solo farming builds to use and I'm so excited of how well it turned out so for this first part round one through three all you really need to do is clear out the NPCs now with the build that I currently use I'm running a flame turret and that's mainly to stop all the guys from rushing me and the flame turret will stop them catch them on fire and then burn everybody around him by that time I have time to kill them and then just keep working the reason why I'm using an ammo box is because I don't want to run out of ammo and as long as I reload inside the ammo box I won't be wasting any ammo you can run out of the ammo box kill people come back in and reload and you'll notice you'll never lose any ammo so that's what's really good about running this ammo box especially if you're running solo that way you don't have to waste shade tech on those ammo boxes now the next time we're gonna be talking is during wave 4 and that's the next crucial round and I'll talk to you why so once you complete wave 3 wave 4 is the round that you need to go secure a computer this is gonna be a little bit tricky because you want to capture that computer as late as possible so timing it right before you get in the circle of the computer to deactivate it is when you want to actually do it what you want to do is drop your ammo box here drop your flame turret you don't want to open the garage door just yet kill as many NPCs as possible what you want to do is look at how far the computer is sometimes you get one within 30 meters that is right outside the door sometimes you get one that's 130 meters that's a little bit further down now the one that is a little further down you want to leave by 45 seconds so 45 seconds to a minute is when you want to leave this hangar but I would recommend you guys doing is killing as many NPCs so they keep spawning in and hopefully you can capitalize on getting all that shade tech now mine is about 123 meters away so I'm gonna wait till a little bit over 45 seconds to open the hangar door and take off I'll probably get there a little bit early but I want to be better safe than sorry so you'll see me around 45 to a minute I open the hangar door and I take off to secure the computer once we get to the computer I'll talk to you guys again One other thing, before you leave this hangar, I would recommend you picking up all the shade tech so you don't have to come back here and pick it up again. I would try to pick up as much shade tech before you leave this hangar so that way once you complete this round, you don't have to run back here because wave five is a boss round. At around 50 seconds, we took off for the computer and we're headed that way right now. One thing I want you guys to remember is once you get in that circle, whether it's 15 seconds or 30 seconds, you don't have to fully capture the computer. You just have to be in the circle. The timer can go down. As long as you're in the circle, you will still be capturing it even after it says stop the data breach. Now, one thing you need to remember is you need to keep that little green line between you and the computer. If you step outside of that green line, you will automatically lose. And since you're by yourself, you can accidentally do this a couple times. I did this about two times before I filmed this and it was frustrating. So just make sure you guys stay pretty close to the computer, kill all the NPCs around here. To make sure you guys are able to open the reward box three times, you need to make sure you capitalize on killing NPCs as fast as possible and collecting that shade tech because that is the only way that you will be able to 
get the box open three times. One thing I would recommend is as soon as you guys clear the computer, kill off all the NPCs but leave one alive. Then head back to that hangar that you started off at the very beginning. Make sure there's no shade tech there. If there is, pick it up and then most likely that NPC you left alive will spawn near you. It's weird how it works, but that's how it works. He will end up being right next to you and then you can kill him right next to the hangar. And that way, wave five, when a boss wave starts, you can be in a better position to get to where we need to get to next. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let you watch the remainder of wave four and I'll talk to you at the very start of wave five. So once you complete wave four, wave five is the boss round. What you're gonna wanna do is head straight to your right and there's gonna be a delivery dock door that you wanna open that's gonna cost you 1500 Shade Tech. What I would recommend you guys doing is staying down here or once you get up top, don't go inside to where we're gonna camp. What you wanna do is stay up here, wait till the bosses spawn. Once you see where the bosses spawn, then you can run back to this back corner and this is where you do a lot of your camping all the way to wave 10. You stand in this back corner, you put your flame turret down and you pretty much can just camp here, killing all the NPCs. What you wanna do is kinda wait till about a minute left and then you're gonna go push the boss. Sometimes you get a boss who rushes you and then you have to kinda run out of this doorway, go to the opposite side, kill the NPCs, and and just keep coming back and forth. Sometimes you get a boss who never comes up here and that's a lot better because then you can just focus on killing all the NPCs, let your flame turret stop all the rushers, kill the NPCs, collect as much shade tech as possible and then once you get within that one minute range that is when you're gonna put in that work and go kill that boss. What I'm gonna let you do is just watch me kill these NPCs. Once we get closer to a minute I'll talk to you guys again and then we'll talk about how I kill the boss. So with about a minute 30 left, I head out to go find the boss because I want to make sure he's not a heavy shield boss because sometimes those take a lot more work to kill and it's a little bit harder to kill them. So that's why I left with a little bit more time. That way I can find him. So he was a heavy shield guy, so I'm glad I actually left a little bit earlier because getting to him using my flame turret is going to be key. This is another reason why I like running a flame turret because if you can get behind them, you can put your flame turret down. It will catch him on fire and that way you can blow his backpack or you can just put in enough damage to kill him. It's going to take me a little bit to kill him right here, but once I kill him, I'm going to kill all the NPCs and then go back to my camping position. That's all you have to do for this part. So kill the boss and make sure you kill him before the timer's up. You see what I did is I dropped my flame turret, it attracted him, he turned his back to me, I was able to drop him and that way once I killed him, 
he dropped an exotic for me, I finished all the other NPCs off, and then I ran back to my camping position. I stay in that camping position in that back corner because it's the best way to funnel in all the NPCs. So once you complete wave 5, you're going to get one resistant cache and then you're going to run back to that position I was talking about. The best thing to do once you start wave 6 is put your flame turret up on that little ledge right there and that way it will shoot all the NPCs, it will make them turn around and you'll be able to melt them really fast. This is going to be the perfect position for you to hold all the way to wave 10. Put your flame turret right there and then put your ammo box right behind you. You'll never run out of ammo and that flame turret will stop all the shotgunners, all the heavy guns anybody who comes towards you they will catch on fire so all the way till round eight you're gonna stay right here camping in this position killing the NPCs putting your flame turret up putting your ammo box behind you so what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip forward to the end of round seven so that way we could talk about round eight which is the next time you need to go secure one of those computers So round eight is gonna be the next time you need to scan the objective, which is secure the computer. Now what I recommend you guys doing is setting up your shop right here, putting your flame turret on that ledge again, putting your box down, and then just mowing down the NPCs. You wanna stay here to around one minute to 45 seconds, depending on how far that computer is. Mine's 136 meters from me, so around one minute, I'm gonna pop my blue. That's gonna be the first time that I use my blue. I'm gonna pop my blue, run past all these guys, and then head straight to the computer. You're gonna see that it gets a little bit hectic. I'm gonna let you watch this whole round that way you guys can see round eight you get a lot of NPCs rushing you especially if you're staying here camping killing all those NPCs and that's what you want to do because you want to get all that shade tech once you run by there it's gonna be a lot of shade tech that you can collect and the more NPCs you can kill the longer you can stay here the better chance of you getting that shade tech and being able to open up those resistance reward caches three times and that's the key you want to be able to open it up before you complete round 10 and then right when you kill the last guy it's all over you don't even have to continue on. You'll kill the last guy, you'll get that resistant to cash, and it'll be done. What I want you to do is pay close attention to how I complete this round, and we'll talk a little bit closer once I get to the one minute round and I pop my blue. As soon as it hit one minute, I popped my blue, I ran past all of these guys, and I ran straight to the computer. I wanted to make sure I had a little bit of time if I made any mistakes. To be there on time, I didn't want to get caught up by any NPCs, so I'm going to make it on time just by popping my blue, running past all the NPCs, going straight to the computer, and then securing it. Why I'm there securing it, I want to kill all the NPCs. That way they keep spawning. The more times they spawn, the more shade take I get. So you guys already get the point. It's the same thing like securing the computer the first time. Stay within the green line. Kill as many NPCs as possible that way they keep spawning you can collect that shade tech and then leave one guy alive so I'll let you finish watching this and then we'll talk right before wave 9 which is going to be a contamination event
So once we complete wave 8, wave 9 is a contamination event. You may be low on ammo like I was, so I used 250 shade tech to fill up our ammo. Now this is possible if your box explodes too many times. You may need to do it, don't worry. You can afford to waste 250 shade tech. Now the problem is the round started before I was able to get to the back corner. So some NPCs started back here. The one thing I want you guys to know, I will release this full build video. I was able to stay alive just with the ammo box. I'm running. A nomad build and like you guys know it has health on kill there so every time i kill an npc i get that health on kill back and then of course i'm running predatory on one of my weapons so i'll get 35 percent of my health back every 20 seconds this full build exactly how i have everything modded exactly how much health on kill i have how much enemy armor damage i have how much damage to elites i have will be out this week i just wanted to put out this guide hopefully you find this guide useful and then you want to see this build because it does work really good and i feel like it's probably the easiest build to run when you're running resistance and farming those classified caches all you have to do during this round is put your flame turret down let it stop the npcs from rushing you and then kill the enemies this round is pretty easy to beat so don't worry about it once you clear the round the contamination event will be done and then the next boss wave will start we'll talk once that wave starts and i'll tell you exactly where you want to be before that round starts So once you complete wave nine, wave 10 is the next crucial round you guys need to pay attention to. What I highly recommend you guys doing is running out of the corner where you like to camp and where I suggest you guys to camp and stay a little bit further away. That way, once the round starts and the bosses spawn in, a lot of the times they will spawn in on the bottom of you. You don't have to worry about them rushing you and you can farm the shade tech off the NPCs. Now, sometimes like this round, you'll see one boss spawn down below and the one boss spawned right up top, right where I want to go back to and camp now that means that both bosses will come towards you now if you do get war as one of the bosses what you want to do is eliminate him first because he's a lot harder to kill near the last minute of a round so what i suggest you doing is focusing him dropping him as quick as possible and then leaving the other cleaner boss alive so what i did here is i got in my position i dropped war as fast as possible and then i focused my fire on all the npcs i don't try to focus my fire on the boss all i want to do here is kill all the npcs farm the shade tech and as he gets closer I'll move to the opposite side and then I'll just rinse and repeat now once I get closer to killing him I'll talk to you guys again so you guys know exactly what you guys need to do near the end of this round
So now that we're within one minute, what I'm gonna do is try to kill as many NPCs as possible. What you could do before you get closer to that one minute is you can pop one of the tanks on the heavy gunner or drop his armor so that way he's a lot easier to kill. So I don't have to kill him right away or I don't have to start shooting at him. I can just focus my fire on all the NPCs and then once I get closer to around 20 seconds, I'll melt him. Now one thing you guys need to pay attention to is once you kill him, the timer will go away and you don't have to kill the other NPCs. Don't worry about killing them. Leave at least one or two guys alive and that way you can go open up all the resistant reward caches and then you can kill the last guy and the round will be over and you'll get that resistant to cash and then you can just wipe and then start it all over what you're gonna see what I did is I killed him I rushed straight to the bay door I'm gonna put in my 3500 shade tech and then I'm gonna go down to the next door I need to open that's gonna give me access to the rewards caches so we're gonna rush all the way down there we're gonna open up the AB storage and that's 2500 Shade Tech. Once we open this up, we'll be right where we need to be. The first resistant reward is going to cost me 1,500 Shade Tech. Second one's going to cost me 3,000 Shade Tech. And then the fourth one's gonna cost me 4,500 Shade Tech. I'm gonna be a little bit short, exactly 350 Shade Tech short, but remember I have three enemies alive and I probably have some Shade Tech laying around. So I'm gonna run around real quick, scavenge up the Shade Tech that I have, and if I need to kill any NPCs to get more Shade Tech, I can at least kill one more, get some Shade Tech off of him. But if you notice, I already have 250 Shade Tech right now. If I kill this one NPC, I'm going to be at 375. Now I can complete the final resistance reward. There you go. That was the final reward. Now I can go out there, kill the final NPC, and then I'll get that resistance to cash for completing round 10. And that's it, guys. That is how you guys complete this. A simple guide for solo players. I will be releasing this full build this week. So I just want to thank you guys again. Be patient with me. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. If you found this video useful, make sure you guys leave a comment down below. If you're new to my channel and this is the first time you're watching a video, hit that subscribe button, turn the notification bell on. And remember, if you ever want to watch me live, head over to Twitch. It's twitch.tv forward slash nothing but skills gaming. And that's where I stream live Mondays, Wednesdays, Friday at 6 p.m. and then Saturdays at 10 a.m. Thank you guys again for all the support. Remember, if you don't see me last stand if you don't see me in skirmish if you don't see me in the dark zone it's only a matter of time nothing but skills is out